All right. Well, you've seen the exposure, I'm sure. Hi, Dr. Fabio. Pickups. Table up a little bit. That's good. All right. So when we do these, we don't really try to minimize the incision. While I'm a firm believer in less invasive surgery on the hip side, do an anterior approach. I'm not sure that the uh, Small incisions on the knee have really proven to be of much benefit. In fact, the literature has shown that there's an increased risk of malpositioning. I do believe that robotics may play a role in that in the future, where you can say, okay, since I can't see very well, I'm going to do a better job <coughs> with a robotic solution to prepare the bone properly. Yeah, your head is in the way. Yeah. Break in there. Brian. No. Brandy. I mean, the key to the iPad or iPhone is to download the app. The Safari doesn't work, and that's the only. And you can do Chrome, but even Chrome, I, I did not able was not able to work on the iPad. But I downloaded the the app this morning on my iPad, and it like worked immediately.
Yeah, so there's really not a deselection process. You know, it's, it's in, the, in the surgery center, we do have some challenges with cost, right? Because Medicare reimbursement is fairly low. But um, I think any, any knee replacement is a great candidate for robotic assisted surgery. Um, especially the ones with a little bit more deformity, especially with the new platform, I think it'll be really good to uh, fine tune the, uh, the surgical um, plan, because we can then fine tune the distal femoral cut as well as the proximal tibial cut. So is he still not on? Yes, who is this? Hey, how are you, David? No worries. Yeah, no worries. We've, it's not an uncommon problem, unfortunately. But um, we're still learning with you, so. Uh, basically, uh, yeah, yeah, Mike Nogler, yeah. Yeah, you know, he's awesome. So, um, you saw the exposure. I mean, you didn't see the exposure, but you, you know how to expose a knee, so this isn't rocket science. We put, we put two pins in, one in the femur. So back out a little bit with the camera. Sort of right above the quad tendon. The slider. The critical part about the slider is to have it far away enough so it doesn't interfere with the robot. And so I put it fairly up high on the femur here. And I get it started. And then I drop it down. You know, my, it's a little bigger. Um, I've not wor worried about the length of the incision at this stage, because you want to make sure you put the stuff in right. But you, uh, I mentioned that before you came on board. True in minimal invasive surgery will require robotics because you got to put the stuff in right. We're not quite there yet, but I think in the future that's where we're going to end up. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was there. I was on the MIS Total Knee team with Aaron Hoffman and Ken Mathis uh, many, many years ago, and we were able to do it, but sometimes I wasn't too proud of my x-rays. So. so the key is to, to have the slider so towards you, so you can, you know, that's the slider, to turn it so that you can access it. And then same here with the slider. Access it here, and then the pegs, they need to be far enough away from the slider because that's, those are your recovery markers, right? So if you lose registration, and I kind of countersink these because you don't want them to move, because then you really lose things. Actually, I, I don't know if you know, but I was very intricately involved in the development of Mako. Yeah, I still get my quarterly mailbox money. Um, and I was involved with the total hip and the total knee. I had the fourth robot ever made on Mako. I mean, I've been, my first Mako was 2003. Let me have a break. Yeah. And then I was very involved with Think Surgical with the FDA study there. So I did the FDA study for Mako and I did the FDA study for Think Surgical. And then I also used the Omnibot to some degree. So this pin really needs to be, she's not got very good bone. Whoa. Yeah. 
correct. Yeah. And she has really soft bone. Oh my goodness. So that peg is not going to be a very solid peg no matter what. Let me have pickups. Yeah, so the <laughs> correct. And a oh, lot. Wow, this is terrible bone. My goodness. Yeah, this is not gonna work. Yeah, this wiggles. Did we lose it again? Do we have another one? Need one more. It was one. It was two. Yeah. I know. I was like, where's the So let's hope that that works. All right. Um, yeah, efficiency, you just got to try to do multiple steps. You go learn as you go. And, and probably the most important part is that you have a good assistant so they can um, do the robot while you are doing the, uh, the exposure and things like that. So right now we're bringing the robot in. <laughs> yeah, no, we have great help here. So the key is to flex the knee at least 120. So we're about 110, maybe a little bit more. All right, bring the robot in. And, <clears throat> and what's really also critical is to, to set it up the way they say to set it up. You know, when I first started out, I got a little bit in a hurry, and I says, oh, yeah, it's good enough, it's good enough. And then, and then we, uh, table up, please. Yeah. Then we didn't get it set up right, and then, no, up. Good. Exactly. That's exactly right. So, <coughs> you know the Germans, they, uh, you tell them how to do it and they change it after the first case. We try not to do that. It's a little bit north, correct? Okay, good. Well, you would like my car collection then. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I, I have five Porsches. Yeah. What'd you buy? The um. Oh, nice. No. Bring the robot in closer. Um, that's good. Do you know the 911 GTS Rentsport Edition? They only made 25 of. I do. It has um, it has 18 miles on it. Okay, that's good. That's good. The um, the slide is good. Yep. All right. So we can talk forces later. I'm going to try to focus here so I don't screw this up. So. Yeah, you really, the, probably the biggest challenge is that posterior lateral corner. So I would, um, probably the first couple, I would evert the patella and then see how close you get. 
and then some lux. Oh yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. We have an outpatient total joint center and the average length of stay is six hours. So now you put the robot right in this where the entry canal is of your femur. And that's the position you have to place it in order to uh, check for so-called space check, making sure that the robot can uh, <coughs> cover everything. Then the next step is you got to put in the motion sensor, since this does not use navigation, right? To like the Mako, you have optical trackers. Can somebody undo this? Has the uh, optical trackers that you utilize in order to detect motion. And the Mako really follows, follows the knee. Well, this does not have any optical tracking, so you have to have some way to make sure that the knee does not move while you're prepping. And that's what these are. So they sense motion. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's two pins in the tibia, two pins in the femur, just like Mako. All right. Can I see this? It, it, it actually works, yeah, if you sublux it a little bit, but it's, it's, it's not always possible. <coughs> All right, slider. Go. So you do the slider first, and then the checkpoint, go. 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 So with the new software, this band goes away, which is going to be nice, because that's a little bit of a pain. Go. Okay. Go. Okay. Go. Okay. Go. Go. The new software is great. That's a, that's a huge improvement. Go. Um, go. If you're matching a CT scan, discrete points are fine. If you don't have a CT scan like the Navio, you have to paint. Because the more data points, the better, right? The more likely you get a, a full, a good model. Um, yeah, it's, it's all about accuracy, right? And, and there's really two components here. There's accuracy, and then there is preoperative planning. And one of the nice things about things surgical is before you ever get to the operating room, you know exactly what you're going to do. And you know what size you're going to use, you know what um, what um, implant you're going to use, and so it's it just really prepares. You know what your varus cut is. You kind of anticipate any kind of issues. So I like that aspect of it, right? From from a planning standpoint. No, I do not have not at all. Ever and once in a while, a uh, a uh, insurance company won't approve it, and we have a place where the patient pays two hundred dollars for a CAT scan because it's not a it's not a diagnostic CAT scan, right? And so,
yeah, large deformity. You know, we've done we've done some severe arthritics. We've not done some, you know, what they had previous fractures, like really obscure stuff. But we've done some real severe arthritics and felt very comfortable with the final result. Hold, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold. So okay. So for some reason it failed registration. Go ahead. Go. 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 And okay. Go. 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 Okay. Go. 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 Oh, it's failing registration. I'm not sure why. It is on tight. All right. I'll try again. This doesn't happen very often. Go. 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 Lateral, correct? Go. 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 
Go. Go. Go. Go. Go. Go. Go. Go. Go. Go. Go. Go. Go. Go. Go. Go. Go. Go. Go. Go. Go. Go. Go. Go. Go. All right, it passed. All right, go. Go. The robot hadn't had the coffee yet, so needed to go. 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 On the soft bone, you have to be really careful you don't poke through the soft bone, right? Because then you get a inaccurate registration. Go. The cadavers. Go. Go. Yeah, go. Go. Yeah. Go. 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 I did medial first. Go. Now I'm on the lateral. Go. 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 All right. Ready to rock and roll? So now, you know, while the robot comes in, I'm going to clean up a little bit more on that posterior lateral corner. Take out a little bit of the fat pad. Obviously, you want to be really careful not nothing is moving, right? Because then it's you have to start over. It's really not if you lock it in nice. It's I mean, we've not had many abort uh, 
aborts. We've had some aborts because of the hard bone. Because in the surgery center we do young male and sometimes their bone is so darn hard that it shakes. Um, and we had a hard time cutting through the bone. But even that is not, not an issue. We just have to slow down the robot. And are, are you a DJO user? Because they have a press fit implant, which I think is, this is the right technology for press fit. Yeah, that's gonna be, be, be nice to see what, what your thoughts are once you start using that. Because I don't use press fit implants, but um, I think DJO is nice. Uh -huh. I, I use, I, no, I, I try not to use striker for anything, not even my suction tubing. Uh, um, I use Corin, which is um, a UK company that I helped develop their, their knee. And then on this particular case, we're doing United Orthopedic Group. And so those are the two that are that I've used with the Think Surgical robot. They are further away, yeah. They're far, far away, actually. How's the picture? Yeah, you can look at, you know, you can click and only watch one monitor, right? One, one view. Yeah. You can either do the four previews. So the, the new robot is also more efficient. It actually, I think it's even more accurate. And the planning is really what makes the big difference because you can now adjust your distal femoral cut, which you cannot with this software. So, yeah. Yeah, it's soft bone. If you if you put in the implants right, because I do kinematic alignment, so if you put in the implants right, your ligament balancing is minimal. Break. We sort of remove the debris as we go. And uh, without shaking things up, because we don't want the BMMs to uh, be triggered and then you gotta start from scratch. Well, you just gotta use your recovery stuff. Yeah, you go drink coffee. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Especially when you're old like me. So that, 
Yeah, usually three. Uh, I use poster Conler uh, kinematic alignment, so I take nine and nine. The implant is nine millimeters, and then, and every once in a while, I'll do nine and eight. Um, but I'm a firm believer in kinematic alignment. So with this technology, you can do what I call responsible kinematic alignment, right? Because I try not to go outside of three degrees of varus on the tibia which I think is safe. And again, with this, you can do it. If you do, if you have extra medullary, then... I got it. I've been doing kinematics for a long time, probably. And then, you know, I trained with, with somebody who trained with Aaron Hoffman, and so we always felt comfortable putting in a little bit of arrows into the tibia, so. Yeah. So the femur's now done. And now we're gonna do tibia. Yeah. No, no, it's not gonna happen. How long have you been in practice? Oh, wow. They like technology. So I planned it seven and a half distal, medial and lateral, seven and a half posterior, medial and lateral. So assuming that the cartilage is about, you know, millimeter and a half to two millimeters in a small lady. And then on the tibia, I planned seven, seven and a half lateral and I think five and a half medial. And uh, that gave me a varus tibial cut I think of two and a half degrees. And my overall mechanical alignment was 179. So one degrees of, of various alignment. And and would will not have to do any I doubt that I'll have to do any balancing. Yeah, you know, it, it was it was always my thought that the reason why we're having the balance is we making we're making shitty cuts. And if you make good cuts, you don't have to balance. You know, make is not accurate. They don't have any accuracy data. They, uh, and um, when we did the IDE study, 
uh, we did a we used a we used a different implant. Oops, I called the force freeze. Oh, do you have a sin retractor? I call. Well, we've, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a, that's a non-starter, right? And so when we did the ID study, we, ne we didn't have a single issue. Right, uh, to the top of the bone. And uh, you just have to plan it right. I mean, it's, the, the, right, the, right the only, now. the only challenge about this technology is if you don't plan it right, you will have an issue. <laughs> well, it's, it, it's not letting me. Correct. Yeah, exactly. And you just really have to look at your plan, right? You, this, this is the kind of case you don't want to have your rep do the plan until you feel very comfortable. And you can't have any overcuts, posterolateral, posteromedial. And, um, you know, you're probably a little more conservative when you f do your first ones to really be inside. And then once you've, uh, you feel confident, then you get a little more aggressive. But it's definitely, you know, Luke, trust the force kind of deal. Yeah. How much have we completed? What did we check? I'm sure it's 70. It is. Okay. How much of the bone did we finish? Because we can just finish the cut. So you're seeing all the technical challenges on this case. Go. Yeah.
Well, we're going to, I think we're like 89% done with the tibia, so I'm just going to finish it with a, uh, with a saw. Yeah. So we're going to, let me have the uh, T handle. Hold this. Have we gone back in another room? No. Huh? No. We can go back. I'll do this. And not too bad. I just, uh, I, I think four. And then meetings in the afternoon, so. Plus, we're doing two live broadcasts. We're doing a we're doing a body cat live broadcast as well. You can back up. Yeah. No, I I don't do more than ten in a day. Well, actually, that's not true. How many did we get Monday? How many did we have Monday? How many cases? We have twelve on Monday. You know this this live broadcasting software is through the internet. There's no satellite. There's no special. You just plug in the computer, and you get four live broadcasts. It's pretty amazing software. Because the picture is good, right? Yeah. Ben Homan. Roger. Yeah, we're almost done anyway. Uh, Bobby? And then do you have a small saw blade or any saw blade? Uh -huh. Suction. Yeah, we were like 98% done. It was that last little swoop. Grab this. So, everting the patella, I think, is fairly essential. But I'd love to see whether it can be done without it. Um, but you have to be careful because you don't want to cause a force freeze in the post here. And you may need to flex it slightly more, right in there. have a uh, tibial trial. Roger. Lift up. Let me have a one size smaller tibia with a one size smaller poly. That's a one. That's a one? That was a one. Okay, one tibia. This is a two. And yeah, a that nine. won't work. Oh, I see. What is this? That's a two and a nine. A two. Two and a two. I just changed that to a two so you have the nine poly. Because okay. this is a one tibia. One yeah, let me have a one tibia with the ultra congruent. So this this one comes in a one. That was one that was on the floor. 
No, this this is the congruent. That should be a one like this. It is. That was the one that it was top on the floor. No, that's the CR. That's the ultra congruent. Brian, do we have an ultra congruent, Polly? That's a, let's just do an 11, that's fine. Okay. All right. Huh? Are they in there? No. I just put in an 11. Okay. Zoom out, Roger. So that feels really good. Gets full extension. That femur all the way down. What size femur was it? Two and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half. Okay. All right. Mallet. Thank you. Let me have a laminar spreader. There's some junk back there. Rake. Pick up. Toby. What were the cuts on the tibia, Brian? Seven and a half, five. Seven and a half, five, yeah. So uh, one time we had to do a recut on the tibia because I didn't put enough slope in it. And so I just took a, you know, you still have to have your regular instruments available, of course. And so we recut the tibia a little bit more slope. But that's, I think that's the only case, Brian, right, where we had to recut? So generally, if, we, if you plan it right, you should not have an issue. Small, Raja. Discus out. All right. Huh? Sounds good. All right, Tabia. So, Brian, I can't drop this one, right? You got a third one? Wow. That's the one thing when you're in your ASC, you have to have a very well prepared rep because when you drop stuff, there you go. That feels great. So that's feels really, really good. She was kind of loosey-goosey to begin with. Got lots of good flexion. So I'm happy with that. Is, is this Medicare? So, okay. Yes? Okay. Okay. Sounds good, yes. 
feel free to share my feel free to share my cell phone so go ahead oh, okay yeah thanks for logging in and um del del <laughs> you're welcome they'll share my cell phone with you and call anytime all right take care thanks bye bye All right, so who's still on? Cool. Any questions? 19. Looks like Dr. Fabi is very, uh, very enthusiastic about things surgical. since we've done one and um, so the uh, the uh, and it's always it's always a little bit more difficult to do live broadcasts on these when when people ask questions because it does require a little bit more attention on my part because there's a lot of moving parts right Yeah, you, yeah, you, it's you have to be. All right, Roger. Unfortunately, I have good assistant that can that know what instrument I should be using, not what I want to be using. Yeah, it does. Yeah, we probably ought to figure out a sort of a schedule where you know in advance, okay, on this and this date, we're going to do a bright live broadcast, and then you can uh, offer that to surgeons and technology people. Yeah, yeah, no, she she always gets it done. We don't we don't say no very often. So here's the other one. Sounds good. Okay, okay. Well, my wife is on call, so so I, I'm I'm gonna be I'm not gonna do much. Kids are home. We'll probably see if my son wants to go play golf.
We can mix. All right. What time is it? Yeah, so it's 9.08. Good. That's pretty good for a live broadcast an hour. All right. Let's irrigate. Thank you. You're still on? You know what I started doing? You know what I started doing? I started using non-latex glove for cementing because it doesn't stick to the gloves as much. Small little detail, but it, it works really well. And the way, the way we figured it out is they open up the wrong gloves and they work better. Yeah. Yeah, so we have non-latex and latex glove, and we use only non-latex, obviously, with allergy because they're more expensive, but, so. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you, yes, you can. Exactly. Yep. Oh yeah, I think, I mean, that's the future, right? You just gotta have a, um, a good cut path and figure out what the interference fit needs to be because it can't wiggle. And so, you know, put, put a press fit anterior, posterior. I think the United implant will be very good for, um, because it has a, a box cut. Um, I talked to Dr. Kisson, and he's done some DJO, and he showed me some pictures, and that works really well as well. But you definitely have to have the cut path done correctly and figure out where the press fit needs to be. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, I would like to do some DJO, but you know, there's some politics involved in this town. Is the DJO person still on? Yeah. Mike, you still there? Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'd love to use DJO, but there's definitely some uh, politics in Houston that we were having a challenge with. thing is, um, I mean, Cindy, you know my past with AF, right? And uh, we just don't want AF's rep being my OR. Because so. we are very secretive. We hope. Yeah. 
I've not. But it's an, you know, it's an, it's an excellent implant. I've looked at it many times. Um, it's, um, and at the end of the day, it's really, there's lots of similarities among implants, but it's really how you put them in. So you see, I put my glove on here and it doesn't stick at all. How nice is that? So I like that. And the corn as well, right? Yeah. Cool. Because Stryker is really promoting cementless. And uh, I think it's going to be the next big human experiment. Yeah, yeah it's spot on. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good thing we have a robot. Warm water? Yeah. I just don't think the Mako is accurate. I mean, you know, we've looked at, we've, uh, Valentina and I have had this conversation some multiple times. And when you, when you measure those posterior cuts, sometimes, sometimes they're accurate, sometimes they're not. But the stacking of errors is there. So. I am. I, I booked a hotel. That's the only. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah, the sooner the better. There you go. Second bash. Um, yeah, it's in the fall, right, the academy? Yeah. 
And it's in San Diego, right? Yeah. I think we, we got the Del Coronado booked up. We, we always stay there. Nope. How's Valentina doing? Bill Walter. Um. Let me have a poly. The real thing. Oh. Put it in. Yeah, uh, Bill just, I talked to him a couple of days ago. He's um, invited me to their AOA meeting virtu virtually. Suction. And away. That's awesome. Is the hospital excited about it or are they putting up the brakes? Yeah. Yeah, I think the uh, I'm not super familiar with the Smith and Nephew robot. I did do a cadaver lab with it, and it definitely was challenging for me. Uh, no. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's... Yeah, they're they're a cost effective solution for unis for the surgery center. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you when uh, when we had the announcement that we had a robot in our surgery center, a thing surgical robot, that caused quite the ripple effect on uh, Smith and Nephew. They they said, "What? A robot?" of that size in the surgery center, how is that possible? Because they really 
felt that they they will have the the market cornered with uh, with their robot in the city center. So they were not happy. Yep. No, I thought you all given them a given them away for free. Yeah. Yeah, how's he doing? Is he uh, back operating? Didn't he have like shoulder surgery or something? He's in McAllen, right? Yeah. Warm water. Well, good. I think um, this is about as much as we can broadcast. Um, we're going to sign off, if that's okay with you guys. Yeah. Come on. You're welcome. Take care. Bye-bye. Brandy? Thank you. What do you think? It's kind of cool, eh?